Good morning. Good to see you. A beautiful morning. And uh, happy birthday, Arlene. Thank you. Thank you for spending your birthday with us. Um, I think we'll start doing that. Every time if, if, if I can, if I know when I can find out whose birthday is, we'll do a little birthday shout. And if you're not here, we'll go, where are you? <laughs> All right. And, uh, but that's good. Uh, we're, we're, we're delighted to be here, uh, First Presbyterian. I keep forgetting the time. People say I should be, because we're now online, we, you should tell people who you are. So we're First Presbyterian. I'm Keith. Uh, there's a whole squad out, out here who uh, are here to worship. Uh, and we hope that when you join us, uh, you're here to worship as well. So, what did I want to tell you? I woke up this morning and thought it was Monday. Did you ever get that feeling? Yep. Uh, and I thought, boy, that weekend's gone in really, really quick. But uh, at, at times our minds are absorbed with other things. And at times we, we wonder just where God is in, in all of the busyness and all, all of the things that are going on. So I want to invite you this morning uh, just to bow your heads with me. And we're going to sing a song in a minute. Um, but let's pray first of all. Okay? Thank you. Lord, we thank you that you are an amazing God who gave up everything for me, for us. Lord, help us to focus on you. Help us to come here and empty ourselves of all the stuff that's going on. Just like I forgot there was a Sunday morning. You sort of, your mind wanders and we want to clear our mind because we want to be able to see you and we want to be able to hear you. We want to be able to worship you. And we want to be able to be challenged by you and encouraged by you. So as we worship this morning, Lord, let us do it from the, the bottom and the depths of our hearts and let's raise our voices and raise our lives in worship to you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Great. We're going to sing um, our first song, uh, and it's called Hallelujah. Uh, your love is amazing, steady, and unchanging. What a promise. Yeah. 
This morning we're talking about the cost of following. What, what is the cost? I want to read to you from Matthew uh, chapter 8 and verses 18 to 22. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross to the other side of the lake. Then a teacher of the law came to him and said, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus replied, Foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Another disciple said to him, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus told him, Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. So the question we want to ask this morning, the question that we're, we're wrestling with today, is what or who do you follow? Follow is a big word today. It, it's a word that we see everywhere. Social media is a, is a world that is driven by followers. Katy Perry has 107 million followers. Miley Cyrus has 115 million followers. Khloe Kardashian has 121 million followers. Jennifer Lopez comes in at 131 million. Taylor Swift at 140. Selena Gomez at 194. Dwayne The Rock Johnson, he's been disappointed with this. It's 199 million. He needs a few more there to get up to the 200. And Cristiano Ronaldo, who if nobody knows is one of the greatest soccer players in the world, has 2 million, 238 million followers. Instagram itself has 367 million followers. This following seems to be all the trend. Everybody's being followed. And I was reading where around the world, Instagram has 1 billion monthly active users. There is even a new rising community of people that they call influencers. And they earn an awful lot of money doing very little. They're influencing people. They're being paid by companies to promote and to say how good their products are and to put out all these different things, highlighting products, lifestyle, and so on. These influencers get paid a lot of money for this. And the question I want to ask ourselves this morning is can each one of us be called an influencer for Jesus? Can you be called an influencer for Jesus? It seems to be, as I said, that that's the big trend. And we don't get a financial gain, but it does pay to follow Jesus. We all know that. Because he's always with us. There's so many blessings that he gives us. It's not a cash incentive to join and follow Jesus. But the thing that we have to remember is there's a cost to following Jesus. There's a cost. Jesus in our reading isn't being hard-hearted today. Sometimes when you read that, you think, come on, Jesus, you know, follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. Where, where's, the, where, where's the love there? But he was replying to that bold statement by someone, I will follow you wherever you go. And I'm sure some of us have said over the years, I'll follow you, Jesus. Yeah, I'll follow you. But Jesus was telling them the words are not any good unless you actually go ahead and follow. And it costs to follow him. He tells them there is a cost. You have to leave things behind. It's not just an easy ride. And it's easy for us to say, I'm a follower of Jesus. I am a disciple. 
But what on earth does that actually mean? What does it mean to us to follow? That video that we showed was just highlighting a few things. What are we willing to give up to leave to follow Jesus? Are we willing to count the cost of discipleship? Luke 14 and 33 says, gives us a hint of what the cost is. Whoever of you that does not forsake all that they have cannot be my disciple. So what's Jesus saying to us? We have to give up everything. We have to go and sell our houses. We have to sell our children. We have to give up everything. Give it all, all away. I can hear, you know, in, in, our, in our mind, that little voice is going, really, Jesus? Seriously? What are you talking about? How can we give up everything? But if you look at any verse in Scripture, you have to understand the context and the meaning of the words that Jesus is talking about. The Greek word that is translated as give up actually means to set apart, to be willing to give up. And it can also mean the fin a final goodbye. I like that. I love, I love that last one, the final goodbye. It's like Jesus saying goodbye to all the stuff that has held you back and follow me wherever you're called to go. It's not easy. I was, I, I've written down here that it doesn't say anywhere that it's easy, but a lot of times church and evangelists and people have made it sound that following Jesus is the easiest thing you can do. And it is, it's easy to accept him, but it's not easy to follow. There's a big difference. It's not easy to be a follower of Christ. Because you're going against everything that society says is the cool thing to be and do. We're saying that the cool thing to do is to follow Jesus. That he makes everything complete. He makes everything right. And the world saying, no, look at these bright lights that tell us this is the way. These are the things you need to follow. These are the things you need to, to do. We're listening to voices, influencers, who are telling us that it's not the Jesus way you need to follow. It's not the Jesus way. It's the road to success that you need to follow. It's climbing the corporate ladder. It's making as much as you can, even at the expense of everyone else. And that's not what Jesus is asking us to do. You see, it costs to be in the kingdom of God. It's not a membership that you have to pay every year. That's not the cost. The cost is that we have to give up ourselves to follow Christ. The old life is gone. That's, that's why I like that final goodbye. You know, you're waving goodbye to your old life and you're walking forward and saying there's going to be something different. You see, there has to be something different when you follow Christ. You can't be the same person as you were before you accepted him as Lord and Savior. Everything has to change. You don't change your personality, but you change how you think and how you live and what you say, hopefully. And that can cost us friends, it can cost us family, it can cost us so much. It actually might cost you the chance to succeed in your career. Because maybe your values have now changed. Maybe the things that a business or a corporation, somebody wants you to do is no longer comfortable for you to do. There is a cost. But the reward is kingdom value. It's a kingdom reward we're talking about. So what is this cost? Well, I want to explain. Take Jennifer and I coming here to be with you six and a half, over, over six and a half years ago. It cost. It cost to come. And at the outset of all this, I didn't think it would cost anything. 
because they didn't expect to come and work and live in America. You see, I had this idea that God had a calling for us to move somewhere, but like he had always done before, he has kept us at home. Thank you. And I would say, if people would look at me and say, oh, you know, what did it cost you? It cost me less, can I tell you, than it cost Jennifer. She's always the quiet one. But if I'm truthful, it cost her more than it cost me. She had to give up a career in school that had spanned 34 years. Leave it behind, say goodbye. She had to leave the home that she built. She had to leave her mom, her brother, nephews, nieces, close girlfriends. We both left her son behind. You see, there's a cost to following Jesus. It wasn't easy. But for me, as I have followed God's call in my life, from having my own business to full-time youth work, I was afraid of what that would cost us as a family. What would that cost us to not have the security? But Jennifer had much more faith than me because she always pushed me to make the move and to let go and to go on and to follow. You know, I was just thinking, I was writing this here. She never knows what I'm go going to say. You know, because I don't re rehearse in front of a mirror at home. She doesn't have to listen to this twice. Once is about all she can cope with. But I was thinking, God really knew what he was doing when he brought her into my life, you know? Because she was the one that was able to push me on. When, when, when she knew God was calling. She knew what the cost would be, but was willing to pay that cost. And then when I thought about, you know, boy, God, you really do know what you're doing. And then I thought, well, that's no surprise, is it? I stand up here every week and tell you God knows what he's doing. Why does it come as a surprise uh, when, when, we really, when I really start to think about it? But we have to recognize that cost before we can see the reward. You have to recognize the cost before you see the reward. You have to be willing to pay the price. And we've been blessed so much. When, when we have followed his call. There is a price to discipleship, but sadly, as a church in churches, we have watered down the cost to make people, people feel comfortable. How many times have you heard that, you know, come and accept Jesus and everything will be okay. Life is gonna be so good for you. It's as if we're saying to them that you're never going to have another worry. You're never going to have another problem. There's never going to be anything that's going to punch you in the face or kick you in the gut or whatever because you're following Jesus and everything is going to be rosy in the garden. It's going to be beautiful. You can just kick back at the side of a pool and just relax the rest of your life away. That's the sort of message that has come across for so long. Because we're afraid to say to people, it costs you to follow Jesus. It costs each of us. I read a great saying that said, Christianity has not been tried and found wanting. It has been found difficult and so not tried. Big difference. Remember the first disciples were called and it says they left everything and followed Jesus. They left everything and followed Jesus. So this morning I want to ask, how about you? What are you willing to give up? You see, Jesus wants us to be ready and willing to follow. The gospel is really, really simple, but it's not easy. We have a message to proclaim that brings hope, but there is a cost. There is a cost. It may call you like Jennifer and I to go somewhere else, to leave home, but more than likely, I believe God is calling you today and calling me today into a mission field that is very familiar to us. That mission field lies in your home. It lies in your family, your work, your school, your college, your community. 
the neighbours beside you. But the question is, are we willing to be a disciple wherever you call us to go? Wherever you call us to go. Many people are willing to be in the army and join the army as long as they only have to march in parade. But don't ask them to march into battle. So join the army for all the razzmatazz and all the parades and but ask them to walk into battle. No, 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 I didn't sign up for that. And it's a bit like that for us in church. People decide to follow Jesus, but we didn't tell them there would be a cost. And the cost would be that they had to share the gospel, that they had to go into battle, to walk into battle for Jesus. Are you ready to battle for Jesus today? Are we ready to take up our cross and to follow him? Because your answer and my answer this morning will determine the outcome of so many people's lives. When we zip our mouths and when we bow our heads and say nothing, people are being lost. People are not hearing the gospel. Think for a moment of the number of family, friends, colleagues with no church, no Jesus in their lives. And the question we're asking this morning is, are they worth fighting for? Are they worth going into battle for? And are they worth us maybe being ridiculed at times for sharing what we're sharing? They are worth it. Of course they are. You know, the people that you haven't even met yet, that you don't even know, are worth fighting for. Why? Because Jesus loves them dearly. Jesus knows them by name. Jesus knows them personally. And he wants them to hear the gospel. He wants us to be on the battlefield. He wants us to get ready and to share the gospel. The problem for church is we, we have heard the word get ready and have decided we could live our lives getting ready. We'll do that again some other time. We're getting ready. I remember back back home, we were, we were launching a whole mission outreach program. And the, and the church, many of the people in it said to me, we aren't ready. We need to be taught more. And I said to them, how long have you been a Christian? They said, 45 years. So how many Bible classes have you been in? Oh, I go to three every week. But their mindset had told them, we still need taught. It's time. We're still in the get ready stage. And we get ready and we get ready and we get ready until we never do anything. Because we're never ready. Because if we were ready, we wouldn't have to rely on Jesus. We wouldn't have to rely on his Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus loves everyone. And I said this a few weeks ago. This is a shock to many people people but he loves republicans and he loves democrats just the exact same he loves black and he loves white he loves all the people who think differently than us and me he loves them the same and he says keith are you willing to go into battle for them are you willing to go It might cost you, but I'm going to bless you. Look, I know we can think of so many reasons to say no to Jesus. I've been there. I've already thought of all your excuses because I've used them myself, okay? I've used them at times through through life. And do you know what one of the greatest drawbacks today is that is facing the church? We're now using a thing called pandemic and COVID-19 as a way of saying, we'll do something when this is all over. My friends, we need to do something now. We need to do something today. We're going to come back to church, you know, at some stage when this is all over. Where did God ever tell us, let's just take time, time out. 
He says we have to act now. Like our song said there before, we need to follow Jesus, even though we don't think we are enough. Because Jesus' words tell us, you are enough, just as you are. Perhaps it's a fear you might let God down. There are things that we need to do first. There are things we need to check off our list. Like, I don't know the Bible well enough. Neither did the first disciples. They had the clue what was going on. We have a clue. We have God's word. They followed blindly and walked into battle. Most of them paid with their life. That was the cost. Perhaps our past is still haunting us. And we're so worried maybe about the reaction of friends and family. What if God asked me to do more than I can actually do? Can I say, rest assured, God will never ask you to do more than you can do. Because he doesn't set you up to fail. He doesn't set any of us up to fail. He sets all of us up for victory. So when anything is thrown at you and said, go and do this here, know that you do it already having the victory. You have Jesus by your side. You see, we live in a world that tells us to fail means you're nobody. We live in a society that tells us unless you succeed in certain things, you're a failure. And God looks up and says, you never will be a failure because you're my child. You're created the way I wanted you to be created. And people will say, look, Keith, I want to serve God, but. That, that three-letter word, but, is the biggest word in our churches and in Christianity today. It's used all the time as an excuse. I want to serve God, but. And you can have all the little dots and dashes after that. And we can add in whatever that is, but I can't just now because the schedule just seems too full. I can't now because I hate wearing these masks. I hate wearing these things. I know I have to. I know, I know it helps. But I hate wearing them because I can't talk to anybody. I can't talk face to face because I have to put my mask on. And then my accent gets even funnier when, yeah, and it gets really deep. It sounds different, doesn't it? And you don't know how somebody's reacting. You can't see somebody's face. We make all these excuses, but when this is all done, yeah, yeah, when this is all, all done, we're going to make a big impact for Jesus when this is all over. When, when. There's always a but and a when. But there is no but in being a disciple. We need to have... An attitude of having a, a, like an overnight bag always packed. So you can just, when God calls, we pick it up and we go. We're ready to go. When I thought, when I thought of that, that mentality of always having your bag ready to go, it threw me back a number of years to uh, Cheryl at school. And... Uh, at the school that she, she went to the school that Jennifer was in. And they, would, they would have done a lot of trips to, you know, we're, we, we, we are part of Europe, so it's so easy, you know, you, you have trips to France and you have trips to Belgium and you have trips to all these different places. And teaching staff used to always say, has Cheryl got a little overnight bag always packed and ready? Because whenever we announce there's something gonna happen, the first person through our door is Cheryl. I'm going, I'm ready. And we used to laugh about, about that. And the fact she was always ready to go. That's why we weren't surprised when she came to live here. Because she's always been ready to go. And that's the sort of mentality that we need as Christians. When God calls, we pick up our bag and we go. In fact, we don't even need to have a bag packed because he's gonna provide everything that we need. Can we develop that ready-to-go spirit in our walk with God? 
Because he, and I know he is calling us to this task. But are we hearing him? He's calling us to become his humble servants. Just like Jesus was. To be peacemakers, to be salt and light in this crazy, mixed up world that we're living in. He's calling us to be ready to go the extra mile. To go above and beyond. To love those we don't really like or we disagree with. He wants us to live lives that show Jesus as he really is. A saviour with open arms who loves all. He's loving, he's curing. He walks through the storms of life with us and he dances with us in the best times of life. We forget that. We always talk about Jesus is always with you when times are hard. My friends, Jesus wants to party with you through life when things are good. I was going to call him a party animal because I think he is. That's the way he lives life. He wants life to be wonderful for you. Not a party animal in the way we think that society thinks, but someone who wants, wants that joy and that happiness and that celebration to be throughout your, your life. Even when it's tough that we can celebrate because he's with us. You know, being a follower, a disciple, does cost, but it's worth it, my friends. It's worth it. Because the blessing that we get, first of all, is, is that we know who our identity is when we come to know Jesus, because he created us. And it's in him that we find our rest and our peace and everything that we need for life. As you follow Jesus, he will set you out on a journey to do his work that his kingdom values. It's not a menial job. It's every job and everything we're called to is kingdom stuff. It's kingdom value. And of course there's going to be a, a cost when we pledge our allegiance to the king of kings. But it's all about you and I being willing to let go of ourselves and to lose ourselves for his sake. He's asking us to take up our cross. The words that he spoke in Luke 9, 23 and 24, he's speaking those same words to you and to me right now, today. Then he said to all of them, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. So this morning, are we ready to pick up our cross? Are we ready to count the cost? Are we ready to follow? I would love to be able to pick up a cross for you, but we can't. It's your cross that he's asking you to lift. And what a picture that we have of Jesus lifting that cross that brought him to his knees with the weight and that rough cross digging into his already broken flesh and he carried that cross all the way for you and for me. And so he asks us to pick up a cross that is much, much lighter than that. He paid the ultimate price. The cost to Jesus was suffering and death. The cost to you and me will probably be Maybe somebody will laugh at us for being a Christian. Maybe somebody will shrug their shoulders. I don't find that very much anymore. People are interested in who this Jesus is, but they don't know because we have never been willing to go into battle for him. 
So are you willing to pick up your cross and to follow? I want to be able to encourage you on that journey. But I want you to know that every step that you take with that cross brings you closer to Jesus. That's the blessing. He walks it with us. What's the cost? It's nothing compared to the reward. We need, need to make the right choice this morning. Or during this week when you're watching this online, whenever it is, there is a choice to be made. And so none of us can leave this room, this house of God, or nobody can leave your online viewing without making a decision. Because that's the way life is. You have a decision to make. Do you choose to follow Jesus? Do you choose to pick up your cross? Or do you say, but could it be another time? That's the choices. It's going to either be yes or no. But we usually just put things off. We can't put this off any longer. There's a cost to following Jesus because at the end of all this is the most val valuable prize of eternity and salvation. What are we going to do with it? What will you do? Because as you leave here today, you walk out these doors into God's mission field. I know there's many churches will have that above their, their doors. Thank you for being with us. Now you're entering the mission field. Just to remind us that every time we walk out of here, God is bringing you here to prepare you for, for a job to be done. And it will cost, but it's worth it. It cost him more than it'll ever cost us. Let's just bow our heads. Lord, there's a cost to following you. There was a cross that a saviour of the world was nailed to so that the cost for my sin and our sins could be paid. And this morning, Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit will fill our hearts and minds and stir up on us a desire to go and be on the battlefield for you, to walk out of these doors into this mission field that is beyond. And not to think about the cost, but to think of the cost that you paid for us. To think about those who don't know you and it is our responsibility to bring them and to make them understand that there's a Jesus, a Savior, who is out there longing to be their friend, to walk with them, to dance with them, to sing with them, to dry their tears. There's a Jesus that is willing to do anything and give everything for me and for you. So today, Lord, as we celebrate this King of Kings, let us have the courage to take up our cross and to follow you. running into that as we we're going to sing our last song which is called King of Kings and as we sing it I want you to sing it as loud as you I don't care whether we're out of tune I don't care what it is as long as we're lifting praises to God but I want you to sing it meaning every word it says, in the darkness we were waiting without hope and without light till from heaven you came running with mercy in your eyes. 
to reveal the kingdom come, to reconcile the lost, to, over, to redeem the whole creation. You did not despise the cross. As we sing it, let this be our battle cry. As we walk into that mission field to proclaim the King of Kings to the world. So let's go because he calls and as you walk out realize what you're walking into you're walking into the place that God calls us to be his mission his mission field 
and you are his workers. Go and have a wonderful week.